Hey friends, it's your girl Lavender. It's been a minute. I know, I know. Um, I don't really have anything planned to talk about specifically. Um, but I did get an email today from a viewer saying that they enjoyed my videos and they miss, you know, that I don't make as many videos anymore. Um, and that was really sweet. I appreciate, um, I appreciate that email and, um, I figured I would just give an update since my testimony video. Um, I was really surprised at the amount of feedback that I got, first of all. I wasn't expecting the amount of views that it, it has gotten, and it was one of my first videos, and um, I just, I felt led by the Holy Spirit to share that with everyone, and people, I'm sorry, I have a kitten around here, so if you hear the background noise, it's, she's playing. Um... Not only did it touch people who are Jehovah's Witnesses, but who were Jehovah's Witnesses, but also, you know, I got feedback from people who never were Jehovah's Witnesses, but who have been brought up as Christians, and it helped them appreciate their faith a little bit better, a little more. It kind of, you know reignited that passion that they uh, said that they lost and that was really touching and that's how I know that the Holy Spirit did um, urge me to share that testimony video so I along with all the love I did get a lot of hate as well uh, a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses commented who uh, just very, you know, you know how they are, you know how they can be. A lot of hate from atheists, um, and also a lot of other cult members who are not Jehovah's Witnesses who were trying to get me to adopt their doctrines. And I felt like I may have looked unsure on my testimony video, um, but I was not in any hurry to rush into any new religion, any new doctrines. I had so much to clear from my thinking, so many JW doctrines to unlearn in my mind. and. It was very hard. I went through a struggle for a while to try to undo and unlearn all those learned behaviors because if you haven't seen my testimony video, I was born in and raised as a Jehovah's Witness and I was baptized when I was 16. Um, I was disfellowshipped at 18. Um, I got reinstated around the age of maybe 20, 1920. And then I was, I became inactive for maybe a couple years and then I was disfellowshipped um, maybe around 23, 24-ish, somewhere in there. Um, it's been such a long time ago, I really don't remember all that well. So, um, even though I was disfellowshipped and I guess I was physically out mentally in, so I was pomy, um, that mental hold was very strong for all those years. And I never allowed um, any religion or belief 
to get in, to sink in. I never allowed any other belief um, to go in. I did visit a church here and there. Um, you know, I live in a suburb outside of Houston, so we visited Lakewood Church a few times. But when God called me and helped me to wake up, I had just woken up when I made my testimony video. And so there was still a lot of doctrines that I had to unlearn. Let me get back to my point. I feel like I'm rambling a little bit. Um, since then, I think it's been two or three years, um, I have been able to go to church. Now, I go to a non-denominational Christian church, um, which is a good fit for me and my family. Um, I'm not really opposed now to go to another church. I say that, but... <laughs> In reality, I don't think I would ever want to be a member of like an actual religion like a Baptist or Pentecostal or Presbyterian or anything like that. Um, I would go visit. I'm okay with visiting, but I could never like be a member or, or anything like that. I, I know a lot of atheist people will probably um, give me a hard time for this, but I'm in Bible college right now. I got an opportunity um, to get my associate's degree in theology, and I was offered a free scholarship, so um, that's what I'm doing. I have been taking these classes for a year now, and my relationship with God has completely changed. It's gotten deeper since I started these classes. Um, <laughs> I will say one of the first things that happened was um, <laughs> I quit smoking. Um, if you've seen my other videos or if you've followed my other videos, I am I was a pretty strong vapor. I always had my vape with me like I had my phone everywhere I went. Never thought that I would ever give that up. Um, but that's actually a pretty powerful story. So if you guys want me to share that on a separate video, let me know. Um, but that was one of the first things that happened. Uh, I felt like God was telling me it's time to quit. Um, so I, I did. I've quit smoking, and it's been almost close to a year since I quit smoking. I think it has been a year now. I think it was July 15th of last year when I quit. Um, but I'm sure it'll come up in my Facebook memories anytime soon now. Anyways, um, I never thought I would, could, want to quit smoking or vaping, um, but... It happened. Um, I've learned so much about the Christian faith as a whole outside the bubble of Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, and I think what I'm learning or the biggest thing that I have learned is that not all Christians believe the same things and the same doctrines and it's okay it's not a big deal um which is totally different from jehovah's witnesses right because everybody believes the exact same thing there is no i believe this but you believe something else like the uniformity is you have to believe exactly the same thing that everybody else does exactly the way the governing body teaches it, right? <laughs> because if you don't, then you're looked at as a weak Christian, a weak Jehovah's Witness. Um, there's no 
I guess the only thing that is universal or how to identify a Christian is who they believe they receive their salvation from. If they say anything else or anyone else other than Jesus, then they're not a Christian. They're not a real Christian. They don't have faith in Jesus Christ because one thing that I've definitely learned outside of the JW bubble is Jesus is not just the son of God. He's not Michael the Archangel. Um, he's not a created being. Jesus, being the son of God, he is God. And that's kind of a revelation that has to happen between you and God. When God is ready to reveal that to you and help you to understand. Now, I do know some Christians that don't believe that Jesus is God. And is it a salvation issue? Meaning, can you still be saved and not believe that Jesus is God? I think yes, you can. Because as long as you believe that Jesus humbled himself, was born as a human on earth, died for our sins, and rose again on the third day, and you believe that he died for you, then you are saved. If you believe that in your heart and you say it out loud, then that's your salvation. And your salvation is a gift that could never be taken away or never be taken back. And I've learned that that's the beginning of your walk with God. Um, what you do from that point of your salvation onward is completely up to you. That's the start of your relationship with Jesus. And yes, I said Jesus. Because the Bible makes it clear that we are to have a relationship with Jesus. And that there is no other name above the name of Jesus. Is God's name Jehovah? Yes, I believe that's one of his names. Now please, I know you guys, some of y'all are going to be, now the, per the correct pronouncement is Yahweh or... And Jesus is Yahusha. I've heard it say Yahusha, Yeshua, Yeshua, Yeshua Hamashiach. Yes, I'm aware of that. Please don't come for me because I said Jehovah. Okay, don't don't come for me. Um, I do believe that Jehovah is one of God's names. I believe that He has many names. And that's a whole different story, but that is something that I've learned in Bible college, that the many names of God, um, it's really interesting. <laughs> in fact, I think I have this book, if you guys are ever curious about it. Um, the Names of God by Lester Sumrall. It's a really, really good book. If you guys ever are curious um, about this book, God's Name Brings Hope, Healing, and Happiness. Um, it's called The Names of God by Lester Sumrall, S-U-M-R-A-L-L. -L. This was one of the books we studied in Bible college. And it's just so interesting. You know, the language, the Hebrew language back then, you know, they're... they're their names match their personality. Um, and sometimes in Jewish culture, they wouldn't name their children until they were maybe sometimes two years old because they wanted to give their child a name that matched their personality. Their names had meanings back then. And so when they asked, 
God, what is your name? He gave them names to describe his personality. And so that's why he has many names, because each one of his names describes God's one of God's attributes or qualities. Like the name Jehovah means Lord God. So one of God's names is Jehovah Jireh, which means Lord God provides, the Lord God who provides. So Jehovah Jireh means the Lord will provide. And uh, there's just m many names that God has. And I find that to be very personal and interesting um, about God. Never did I ever have a doubt if God existed. I never did. I always knew that God existed, but I didn't really know him like I do now. I, I made a, a video a, long, a while ago. I think it was called something like, I didn't know Jehovah until I left his, air quotes, organization. And that's really true because, you know, the the Bible wants us to have a relationship with him. That's why, you know, that scripture that says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of the heavens. Some will say, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we heal the sick in your name? Didn't we cast demons out in your name? And that Jesus will look at them and say, get away from me. I never knew you. You know, that, that word no is an intimate knowing. Kind of like if, um, hey mama, if I wrote a book report on Michael Jackson, I could say, I know a lot about Michael Jackson. I've read about him. I've seen interviews. I know about his personality. I know what he does. I know what he's capable of. And when I see my kitty, she don't like to be held. She's a little sick right now. But, um, hi, mama. Um, but I can't say that I knew Michael Jackson personally. I didn't have an intimate relationship with him. I didn't know. I know of Michael Jackson based on what I've read about him, but I didn't know him. And that's what that scripture really is talking about. It's knowing, did you have a relationship? Did you talk to him? Did you know him personally and intimately. Um, and the way I've heard s this described as far as even um, taking the bread and the wine, um, my mind just went blank on what it's called, I'm sorry. But during the memorial, you're taught to reject the blood and the, the wine. But in reality, communion, that's what it is. In reality, um, you take communion to represent your acceptance of Jesus' sacrifice. It's okay, Mama. Your acceptance and your receiving Jesus. And not a rejection. I know, you're all right, Mama. And just like a husband and wife, they're most intimate moments are when they're physically intimate. Taking communion is the most intimate moment with Jesus. And it is equal to or symbolic of a husband and wife being physically intimate. Because you have to be open to another person um, as a woman, you have to be open to receiving another person um, intimately, physically, int physically intimate. I don't know if I'm explaining this right, y'all. <laughs> I feel like I'm making a mess of this. 
Um, I don't mean this in a sexual way, so I, I hope you understand that. I mean that communion is the most intimate moment between you and Jesus. It's important to have a personal relationship with him. Religion is not, religion is not what Jesus meant to teach when he came. And religion is one of the big reasons why people are so turned off with God and Christians. Because we act a fool. We do. And there's moments when uh, we just act stupid. We just do. Because we're people. And one thing that I've learned is, you know, we don't serve people. We don't put our trust in people. Because people will always let us down. I mean, we're flesh. We're imperfect. We're going to have moments where we disappoint each other. And... We have to be able to not let that affect our relationship with God or be turned away from God because of what people have done to us. And that is not an easy thing to do, you know, depending on how bad somebody was hurt. But that's another thing that I learned. I just, I've been learning so much and I'm so much more confident in my beliefs now and in my trust in God I I wish I could just open my mind and heart and share that because I am not good with words <laughs> the way that I want to be I'm in a, a good place and even though you know I still have problems just like the next guy I've got issues just like the next guy. Um, that hasn't stopped. But what has stopped is that I know I, I have faith and I trust that Jesus will bring me through whatever situation I'm trying to get through. And I have joy. I mean, joy of... It doesn't matter my surroundings. It doesn't matter my circumstances or my situations, whether I have money or don't have money, whether I have things or don't have things, whether I have a nice car or a new bag or not. Um, that true joy, you know, it, you're capable of, of having that and feeling that no matter what. And that's... That's a good feeling. Okay, I'm at 23 minutes. Okay, I'm rambling, you guys. The other thing I wanted to say is... <laughs> uh, one of the things that has happened that has been such a huge blessing for me and has helped me in my find my purpose is I joined the... It's called the Praise and Worship Team at church. Yeah, um, so you basically are on this team and you, at least our church, um, our Sunday service is an hour and a half. The first 45 minutes is just singing, singing songs to the Lord. And then the second half is the, the talk or the sermon, whatever, the word. And um, my favorite, favorite thing to do is to sing. I've always had a passion for singing since I was little. And of course, you know, as a Jehovah's Witness, you can't do anything with that. Um, sure, you can have local talent shows or whatever and sing a little bit in front of your brothers and sisters or whatever. Um, but, you know, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Uh, you can't do nothing with that. But here, I, I'm leading songs. I am 
enjoying it so much I'm, that I'm able to share that gift with other people and help people worship God in that way with their voice or instruments. Um, that has um, brought me a lot of peace, I can say. That's all I can really think about right now. I think I should keep this short. I don't want to be too long. I don't, I'm, I'm sorry if I rambled on. Um, um, I just wanted to say hi, you guys. And um, I love y'all. And um, I hope you guys are doing well. Um, I'm seeing, I, I've got so many things going on right now. Um, you know, with the whole COVID thing, they, my job, they made it permanent work from home thing. So that's been a blessing. I work from home permanently. Um, I am seeing like, not really a therapist, but more of a life coach. Um, and that has helped tremendously. And he has helped me um, unlearn a lot of the doctrines, not even the doctrines, but just the behaviors, the thinking, because, you know, you may think that you're healed or that, you know, because you change your belief, but those thoughts and feelings, they come out in other ways that you don't expect in your relationships with your spouse or your kids or other people. And it's really, really hard to let go of those. So this life coach has really helped me to look at life in a new way outside of the JW bubble, uh, if that makes sense. Um, being on the worship team, I'm also taking vocal classes. Um, I'm kind of not really taking piano lessons, but I'm kind of playing with that a little bit. Um, it's been... I, my life's been busy, but it's been a lot of fun. Um, I've got my middle son, who's a senior now, is about to start school, and my, my baby, she is a sophomore this year, and she's getting ready to, to start school as well. So I just have a lot going on, but I love y'all and hope y'all are doing well. Um, so that's it. If there's anything specific that you guys might want me to talk about or make a video about, Drop it in the comments or email me. Um, my email is lavenderfrog at yahoo.com um, or just comment. Um, so that's it, you guys. Take care. Good to see y'all. Bye.